Hello everyone, I am Sam with Darshan Academy. Today we will be discussing about the OET speaking module. And my topic for today would be how to handle aggressive or angry patients. Um, before I begin, I would like to talk about four important points. Uh, the first thing is I would suggest you to pay attention, stay focused. The second thing is make sure you are aware of the criteria. It's important that you should know all those criteria of the nine. One of them I'm going to pick today and speak about. The next thing is ensure that you know to respond well, to put up a phrase and then talk about your task. Most importantly, complete your sentences. We do make sentences, but the sentences are not complete, which is some of the problems that I have noticed in most of the OET students who do a speaking. Uh, certain examples would be like, I understand, um, I am sorry, uh, do not worry. These are certain things which are oftenly repeated. So I decided that probably the talk that we do today should be regarding how to handle an angry or an aggressive patient. So the criteria that I was supposed to talk about today would be understanding and incorporating patient's perspective, which is what we lag. I prefer to say that um, we are not focused coming to point number one, not paying attention when the examiner or the interlocutor is speaking to us. Uh, probably the reasons are many, mind wavering, nervousness, a number of reasons. But when you stay focused, you are you're, you're attentive. One of the criteria in the, in the uh, portion that I said would be active listening. When we, when we put active listening into use, it simply means that we have paid attention and we have known every word that the patient spoke to us. So that I can paraphrase my ideas. That was what I meant by point number one. Point number two was the criteria. Uh, understanding and incorporating patient's perspective. Here we're going to focus on two things. One, understanding the patient's emotion, the feeling that they have expressed us, what they're trying to tell us, what scenario or situation or concerns that they are going through. That was one. Second thing is, what about the verbal and non-verbal cues, which is the very, very, very most important thing many students miss out. We are not focused on their emotions. We are not probably looking into what the patient is trying to convey. So we miss out their cues, which is why we have no ideas to put across. And eventually we are not able to handle a patient who is very angry or who is agitative. And the most important thing, like I said before, was sentence construction or completion of the sentence. We just leave it with a half. We tell that I understand. We tell that don't worry but we missed the remaining portion what actually the patient was trying to convey to us. So here I go, I'm running out of ideas and I really do not know what to tell at that point of time. Let's take a scenario for example, so that I can put down my points and explain how do you attend or how do you handle a patient who is very angry or agitated. So here's a patient who is on the bed and we see him in the morning. I'm the nurse doing the rounds and I visit him and he says that you are late why didn't you reach me earlier i had rang the bell almost 30 minutes back so we understand either he's angry or he's agitated in most scenarios we just say that i understand your concern but we didn't listen to what he actually said i did not pick his verbal cues or his non-verbal cues i did not pick his emotions whether it was anger or frustration or upset or disappointment, what kind of emotion he, he expressed to me. So had I paid attention there, I would have been able to understand what emotion he is expressing me. If it is verbal cues, meaning what is this word that he's trying to tell? What about his note, whether it is rise or fall, whether there is an increase or decrease in the tone of his action? What about the non-verbal cues? Is he telling me through his body language that he's annoyed, that he's angry, that he's upset. And when I pick those words, I'm able to complete my sentences. The sentence structure would fall. Either you say a simple sentence, or you say a compound sentence, or it is a complex sentence. Probably you can use words like adjective, or adverbs, or maybe pronouns, or nouns, 
to express and make it more sounding clear or giving an emotion in such a way that the patient feels that you have understood his emotion. So in this scenario, I should have told him, Mr. John, I understand how frustrating this must be for you. I am so sorry for the delay. Now coming to the third point where I said I will talk about response, then the phrase and then the task. So don't jump into conclusion. Don't go straight away into your task. Tell the patient that responding very emotionally, I am so sorry for the delay. I know that you had been waiting for almost 30 minutes. I am so sorry to keep you waiting. It was a delay from my side. I do apologize for the uh, inconvenience. I do apologize for the uh, wrong that uh, uh, we had unfortunately done because the department had been busy. I hope you don't mind this. Now coming to the task, what was written in your paper, you look into it and then just repeat it as it's. So here you have made a better relationship. You had focused, you had paid attention, you had done active listening, you had responded you had made sure that you give a phrase and then you did your task. You had done the criteria which is understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective in the form of cues which is verbal and non-verbal. At the same time you have completed your sentences clearly showing all the parts of speech over there. And I think that this will definitely help you and give you more idea on how to handle a patient who is very angry, who is agitated. Probably that's the expression of the examiner. We don't have to fear. I believe that this session helped you a lot and I'm very sure that it will definitely give you more interest on learning on to the OET speaking and thank you so much for listening to me and do subscribe and we will certainly see you the next time.